Do you have trouble clicking on things? Are you controlling your units ineffectively? Or do you just plain suck at Company of Heroes? Well then, good news, because thanks to this YouTube exclusive offer, you can get a tightrope micro guide. And if you act now, you will get four tips for the low, low price of watching just one video and get a free infomercial parody meme to kick things off. Don't delay, watch today. The issue when trying to select a squad of infantry by clicking on the squad's icon is that depending on the squad's spacing, the icon can shift quite dramatically when one model from the squad dies, and this can leave you clicking on air. And if you're like me when you're trying to play fast, you don't double check to see that you actually have the squad selected, you just start giving it commands. And it might take me around a second before I notice that my selection input didn't work. Which is why I turn sticky selection off, so those commands aren't going to the previous unit that I had selected. And the issue with trying to click an individual model to select the squad is that they are quite small. So when combined with seemingly erratic pathfinding to get around world objects, the screen shaking during certain explosions, and the squad automatically shifting around when they get shot at, this makes clicking on an individual model quite challenging. So when a squad of infantry is on the move or under fire, it is more reliable to do a small drag or box select, albeit slightly slower. And the box only has to contain one model from the squad for it to be selected. And this is both a blessing and a curse. It means you can execute the box select input very quickly and not have to worry much about precision. However, it means you might end up selecting more than one unit if another is nearby. And this is where the tab key comes into play. From having a group of units selected, you can give individual commands to different units inside the group. So once you have a group of units selected, if you press tab once, you will then give individual commands to the first unit that appears in the UI that is part of the selected group. Press tab again and then you go down to the second unit in the group and so on and so forth. To get the most out of using tab, it is helpful to know the order in which a group of units will line up in when selected down the bottom of the screen. And it is actually the same order in which the units appear on the UI in the top right hand side of the screen going left to right. And the way that the units are organized in the top right hand side of the screen, starting on the left you have elite infantry and whichever one was called in last will appear furthest on the left. Next down you have the mainline infantry squad, in this case conscripts, then you have the engineering squads, the next group is for snipers and heavy machine guns, second to last are mortar teams, and on the far right is always the anti-tank gun. The order in which vehicles line up is a little bit more convoluted, but basically it goes heaviest vehicles on the left to lightest that are on the right. And when it comes to mixed selections of both infantry and vehicles, it gets a little messy again. But on the left you have super heavy tanks and elite infantry in one group, main lines and medium tanks in the middle, and then the more support oriented units on the right. Be aware that putting a unit into a control group moves it to the far left hand side of the order in the top right area of the screen, but does not change the order when selected as part of a group down the bottom. Before I made this video I actually didn't know this, but you can go backwards through the group selection by hitting control first and then using tab. And obviously when compared to using tab a bunch of times to get to units that are at the end of the group, using control tab instead is a much faster method. You can also use the tab key from the tactical map, and this is helpful for when unit icons are stacked on top of each other, making it hard to click on the unit on the bottom. The unit icon that is on top in the tactical map is equivalent to the unit that is furthest left when selected as part of a group, like we learned about earlier. So for units of the same type, the newest unit is on top, elite infantry on top of main lines, and anti-tank guns always on the bottom. So this means that generally you'll need to hit the tab key twice to access the unit that is on the bottom of the stack when using the tab key from the tactical map. 
Now let's take a look at a few examples where using tab can be very strong, so you know where to start integrating it into your game. When you have a bunch of units that have retreated back to base. Some units are full strength and ready to fight, others require reinforcing and healing first. And multiple squads are stacked on top of each other, making selecting individual units very tricky. But when using the tab key, getting the right units out of your base is very smooth, and seeing Von Ivan do this on stream was actually what motivated me to start integrating the tab key into my own gameplay. Using the tab key opens up new control group opportunities. Say you want to have all of your indirect fire bound to one control group, but you have a couple different types of artillery, and when selected as a group, they don't share a barrage ability. But when you are comfortable using the tab key, you can quickly give them commands to target either separate areas or the same. And perhaps this allows you to synchronize and synergize the abilities better, such as firing a flare with the mortar to spot for the artillery piece. Or perhaps you just don't want to use the control groups down the far end of your keyboard to minimize your hand movement. The tab key can allow you to fit more units into fewer control groups, but still control them efficiently. And as mentioned earlier, it allows you to box select units more frequently without fears of accidentally selecting more than you intended to and having to redo your selection. A fast double left click on a unit will select every unit of that type that is currently on the screen. This can be helpful for controlling units that are in a specific area of the map without involving everyone else and setting up control groups. Related to this is control plus left click on the units in the top right hand corner of the screen. And this will select all of that unit type on the entire map. I've been using this to select all of my engineers, putting them in a control group for fast repairs, and bringing my individually controlled anti-tank guns back into the one group. You could also use it to very quickly and bluntly control your army during a fight. And then you have shift plus left click. Doing this on a unit that you don't currently have selected will add it to your selection group. You can also use shift plus drag left click to add multiple units to your selection at once. Or shift plus fast double left click to add all units of that type that are currently on the screen to your selection group. Or you can use shift plus clicking on a unit that you already have selected to remove it from your selection group. And if you have control groups set up, you can hit shift plus that control group number to add it to your current selection. However, be aware that this functionality is going to change somewhat in Company of Heroes 3. You can also get units to do a set combination of commands in order with the shift key. This is commonly called queuing. Each successive command you give to the unit while the shift key is held down adds that command to the unit's queue of orders that it needs to complete. And you can mix a whole bunch of commands together, such as to move somewhere, attack something, build, or retreat, so on and so forth. Queuing up commands allows your unit to perform complex sequences without any further inputs from you the player. And this frees you up to control your other units while the queue of commands gets worked through. So essentially you are spending a bit more time up front to set up the queue of commands to free up a lot more time thereafter. So as a player this can allow you to get more things done overall in the same amount of time. Or perhaps just reduce the mental and execution burden of having to execute these commands at the right time on all these different units. There are of course limitations to the queuing system. You cannot queue up commands that a unit currently does not have access to. Such as if a unit has an ability on cooldown, but would be off cooldown by the time the queue had finished, you can forget about that. <coughs> or say you are inside a building, want to get out of the building and retreat instantly. Since there is no retreat available from inside the building, you cannot queue up that command. Another issue with queuing movement commands on infantry in Company of Heroes 2 is that instead of running to the exact point that you specified, 
When they are about five range short of that exact point, they start moving to the next point that you specified. So this makes high precision movements very difficult when queuing up movement commands with the shift key. And it is far worse with vehicle movement. Here the T-34 starts to turn to the next point around 25 range away from the ordered position. So knowing this, you could try to compensate for it. However, personally, I only use these queued up movement commands for very broad movements where precision isn't important. Here are a couple examples of the most commonly queued up commands in Company of Heroes. Building a sandbag and then queuing up a drag move command into the sandbag. This way, once the squad has finished the construction of the sandbag, they neatly reposition themselves into the heavy cover. Picking up a decrewed team weapon with the squad and then queuing up a retreat command on the remains of that squad. This lowers the amount of time that the low model count squad is on the front lines, thus reducing its chance of getting wiped. Though it does have some drawbacks, if your squad gets suppressed while they are running towards the decrewed weapon, since suppressed squads cannot crew decrewed team weapons, the squad will end up instantly retreating. Whereas with manual control, you could force away the source of suppression and then crewed the team weapon with the squad once they had recovered from that suppression. Going that way. Activating a snare such as an anti-tank grenade or Panzerfaust and then queuing up a retreat command with the aim of trying to get the squad away from the tank as fast as possible so it doesn't get wiped. However, even in this short demonstration you can see an issue with this. The time between the Faust firing and the Grenadiers retreating is close to 2 seconds. Whereas if you manually give the order to retreat after you see the Faust launch, you can greatly reduce this delay. This delay that is added to the queued command is due to what I would call animation wind down time. In the case of the Faust and Grenadier, they muck around with the Faust tube before they start their retreat. Whereas for other abilities, the wind down action is not quite so obvious to see. And these wind down times vary quite a lot, even between abilities that are in the same class, such as anti-vehicle snares. So I decided to time between the anti-tank projectile being in the air and the squad retreating. So going from fastest to slowest, we have the Fusilier anti-tank grenade with a delay of 1.12 seconds. The second fastest is the Penal Satchel with a delay of 1.23 seconds. Tied with that is Conscripts also with 1.23 seconds. Then Royal Engineers with 1.48 seconds. Then Fox Grenadiers with 1.85 seconds. And Regular Grenadiers also have the exact same delay. And by far the slowest is the Rifleman anti-tank grenade with a delay of 2.73 seconds. So for fuselers that have a relatively low delay and quite a tricky animation and projectile to see from the default zoom level, curing up a retreat command makes a lot of sense. But for Panzerfaust that have a much longer delay and are far easier to see, manually retreating makes a lot more sense during high risk situations. And for Rifleman, you have the longest wind down combined with the hardest animation to see, so good luck. I also checked a few anti infantry grenades. The Grenadier's rifle nade had a long animation wind down of just under 2 seconds, but everything else I looked at had a wind down of under 1.5 seconds, making them reasonable for queuing commands afterwards. Be aware that getting suppressed reduces the range on these anti infantry grenades. So a queued up grenade into retreat may end up taking far longer than you expect as the squad tries to crawl into the now much shorter range to launch the grenade. A couple more commonly queued up commands. A movement command away from a mine after you've finished planting it. So if an enemy tank rolls up and starts shooting at your squad, they won't be standing on top of it causing it to trigger. And the squad's formation and posture once they have finished planting a mine is a dead giveaway to the enemy. Another commonly queued up command is planting multiple pieces of barbed wire, though there is a bit of a trick to that. So while holding shift, after you've got your first piece of wire at the correct angle, left click to plant it down and then right click 
This will free up your cursor so you can plant the next piece of wire at a different location. If you don't right click after planting that first piece of wire, the wire planting will try to continue from your first piece of wire's finishing point. I remember this being quite confusing when I started playing. If you've been playing the game for a long time, your unit control patterns can become quite calcified and difficult to change. But I would say don't get frustrated and give up. Accept that it could take many months to get comfortable even working something simple into your game as part of a process of constant improvement. And if you try to tackle too much at once, it can lead to constant feelings of overwhelm and frustration. So while it may be quicker for your development, at the end of the day, this is supposed to be a game where you're having fun. As always, a huge thank you goes out to my Patreon backers. If you want more videos like this, I hope you consider coming on board. 